Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for update 48 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So we have got a ton of stuff to cover this week, so I'm going to jump right in to, uh, to the new toy to begin with. We have got, much needed uh, after a while, a brand new version of the M4. Now, I, I still love the, uh, the version that exists in the game. It was uh, made by a fellow named Night Frontier. It was the first uh, gun made by another 3D artist uh, that I put into the game. Uh, but there have always been a number of little issues with it that made it less than ideal for such a sort of central firearm in the game system related to its dimensions, its rail attachment flexibility and such. And I finally found a new one that I really love. And so let's take a look at this right here. This is our new uh, V2 M4. Uh, its stock can come in and out. It's got a back sight uh, that can be uh, toggled up and down. It still has that classic M4 style uh, front iron. Uh, we've got rails for uh, for days on this sucker. A couple other nice little details. Um, actually, I just realized I picked up the wrong version of it uh, first to begin with. You're like, wait a minute, the ejector's on the wrong side. Well, you could say it is. I have a left and a right-handed version of this uh, gun. Actually, uh, modified by hand. The default of it came in in right hand, but because of the way that the textures and materials were broken down, and because I just wanted to see how long it would take to do, I've actually made a left-handed version of it as well. It's in the item spawner. It's called the M4 Left Hook. So, uh, so yeah, so let's put the lefty version there. Let's take a look. Another Stan Egg Mag version here uh, to pop into it. We got a dust cover that pops open when we pull that bolt handle back. Let's pull that out. Let's check out this new sight. Rock that over. Ah, wonderful. So yeah, so here you have it. We have a, our, our new M4 and Let's go ahead and fire the uh, the left-handed version here so it doesn't feel left out. Also notice it's got this nice little latch on the uh, on the charging handle there. Let's see. Let's, I'll, 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 try, I'll try firing this lefty. It's so awkward. I'm sorry to everyone who's left-handed and has to deal with right-handed weapons in this game because, man, this is, this is so hard for me. Beautiful. So yeah, so that is uh, that is where we're starting. That's those are our uh, our new uh, ones. Other than obviously the uh, the World War II firearms I've been showing you uh, this past week. Now let's take a look at some other sort of enhancements and changes uh, that have come this week. Uh, one one this a little this a quality of sort of life upgrade. Uh, a number of folk have said to me that they don't really use the P90 much uh, because of the fact that the mag oftentimes gets caught up here and it's hard to actually seat it down here. So I have basically made it much easier as long as you can basically get the mag through its initial insertion point here, you can basically just jam it forward and it will now snap into place. love watching those rounds just dump out the bottom of it so yeah so that should hopefully be much easier easier for you to strip out and just jam ah, man see i go to demonstrate it and then i mess it up but trust me it's uh it's at least better than it was i'll still see if i can make it so it doesn't catch on this stupid little like retaining bar quite as much Next big one, this one should be for anyone who likes using uh, revolvers in H3. This should be come as a oh, finally kind of moment, which is that I have completely rebuilt the way that speed loaders work. Um, they actually get cleaned up by the cleanup option in the uh, wrist menu. But more importantly now, you no longer have to like futz and perfectly align everything to get them in. You basically just have to touch the speed loader to the back of the cylinder and be rotationally aligned with it. So you can't do it like this. You can do it like, oop, like that. Let's see how fast we can do, do that. Boom, in. 
So this makes revolvers uh, much more tenable to use in the uh, sort of faster paced modes uh, like take and hold uh, without hopefully uh, without sort of removing some of the sort of simulatory uh, fidelity that you all enjoy. Um, I personally still loved to a certain degree the like lining up individual rounds with chambers and things like that. Um, but due to the complexity that this object had to be to support that, along with the complexity of the cylinder, these two objects interacting were the single greatest source of physics crashes in H3. So it was about time this happened. Um, I know some of you may miss the way it worked before, but it's way more stable now, and it's just way more usable for things beyond slow target shooting. So I think in the end, it's a, uh, it's a value add. Boom. Awesome. What next? What next? Ah, yes! Uh, fresh from, uh, from Patrick. Actually, he made this a while ago, and I just never got around to uh, implementing it because I had to build custom co collision for it. We've got this absolutely freaking gorgeous uh, drum mag to, uh, to go with our AKM. Put that over there. It's a 75 rounder. <laughs> Still got more in it, but you get the point. Uh, but yeah, so this is popped in here. It can, of course, still be, uh, you know, um, you know, tactically reloaded uh, like the regular mags. Punch that in there. Boom. Ready to go. So that's in there. That is in there. What next? Ah, and then lastly, in terms of the little quality of life changes, I have gone back. I originally didn't do this because... Um, Sort of w within the game system, we've got PX4, CX4, and M9 magazines, which can theoretically be cross-compatible in various platforms, as long as they have the correct sort of magwell insert. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that there are points where, you know, the simulatory fussiness like that doesn't, you know, is for its own sake. It doesn't really add anything. So in this case, I went back and I made it so that the both the M9 and our Cleric M9 uh, machine pistol are now compatible with CX4 and PX4 magazines. So the M9 and Cleric M9 now have a 30-round uh, mag to work with. So, and I'll be updating all of these spawn tables uh, to spawn the cleric one with that when relevant. Cool. So that is all of the uh, the new toys and such. Now, one other fun piece of new functionality. So, you might be like, Anton, what are you doing here? Why are you spawning these platforms? What are you going to do with these? Well, do, 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 do. I'm going to make myself, you could say, a little bit of a burn box. And you're like, oh dear, what could we be doing with that? Well, I have finally gotten around to doing something I had meant to do a long time ago, which is to make it so that fire and thermal damage, as well as just regular damage uh, within the game system, can actually set off cartridges. It has not been done in a super realistic way, as all of the, the data that I gathered, both from some H3 fans early on actually dangerously doing it, uh, and watching other videos, is that it's, uh, it's not actually super exciting. The bullet just sort of pops out, and it can take a while to actually heat up a cartridge. So this is very much a less realistic, more accelerated version of it. And you're like, man, you're talking a lot. It takes, it takes a second to set this up. Let's get that there. Cool. What should we do this with? I think we should do this with some 50 BMG rounds. So let's spawn ourselves an incendiary. Beautiful. So let's just do this with one of these, just so you can see this happen. I'll just put it here. Oh, oh there it went. It always surprises me. Uh, there's a bunch of randomness in terms of exactly when they pop. Uh, in regards to uh, the cook-off. So what I'm going to do is actually put a whole bunch of these in my quick belt slot, and let's just dump a whole bunch of these into here. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's get more. Let's make sure they're facing different directions. 
Do, do, do. I can literally hear my GPU getting louder as I'm doing this, especially because we're recording video. All right, let's put that over there for safety. Next, just to make sure to sort of carry the, uh, the, uh, the sort of fire contact messages, I'm actually gonna insert a few of these into the pile. So it will help. If one makes contact, they'll start igniting each other. Let's put a couple of these backwards. There we go. Beautiful. Here we go. Let's uh let's go ahead and wait and Is it done? Oh, oh. And it's done now. So yeah, I'm sure I, 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 you know, this was something I did on the spur of the moment. And uh, mainly because I needed to add some extra event hooks in there for bullets being struck by damage for other contexts. And uh, ended up accidentally creating a really fun toy to play with. So I can't wait to see what ridiculous stuff you guys come up with in terms of like makeshift traps or what have you uh, with the new uh, fire explodable rounds. So yeah, so let's jump out of the indoor range here into the uh, take and hold scene and talk about the things that I sort of polished up and changed since its initial beta launch. So we're in the new take and hold uh, mode that those of you who've been running on the beta branch have checked out. If you're just seeing this update video now and you're like, what on earth is take and hold? Jump uh, to, uh, I believe two devlogs back and take a, a look at it. It's a mode that I added sort of spur of the moment uh, to sort of when I was building sort of new environment tiles, like the one that you're seeing uh, me stand in now. It's been a sort of a surprising hit amongst the uh, community. I know it's already the mode that I play uh, the most recently. And uh, we're getting a, uh, a few updates to it for uh, for this uh, for this update. Ignore the fact that some of the menu here looks kind of broken and missing. It's still being worked on at the time of this recording. Um, but the big thing that's been added since the uh, beta is that I have rebuilt the loot tables entirely. Um, they're, they're way more nuanced. They are grouped more based around sort of ammunition capacity um, and how difficult firearms are to, to reload, with sort of at the bottom being things like break action shotguns, uh, revolvers, bolt actions, and all the way at the top being things like drum-fed uh, rifles and such. So, uh, the new options that were added is that you can, in fact, turn on the item spawner for use uh, prior to, to starting your mode. If you just want to, if you don't want to worry about finding loot, but just want to run to points, take them, and hold them, and with just whatever your favorite firearm is, you can do that if you wish. Um, you can turn the music on and off, and you can change the, so the, essentially the loot table progression that's being used. It defaults to standard, um, but you can also make it, uh, if you want to make it more generous, you're, you'll basically start with a slighter, better weapon in general, and you'll get to the way better weapons much faster. And if you do it on hard mode, you will basically be denied the absolute top class of, uh, of weapon respawns, and it will take much longer for you to start seeing mid-tier stuff. Um, for those of you who are, you know, true revolver warriors and, you know, shotgun surgeons, I definitely suggest trying out hard mode. So let's start here and take a look at the other big change. So we spawn in our spot, our reticle still there. I did not get a chance yet to pop the reticle on the controller, at least at the time of this uh, filming. I may be able to get that in just before release. We will see. Uh, if not, it'll go into the next update. Uh, but the big thing now is you'll notice that some of the big shelves are gone and the equipment isn't just laying out. The reason for that is that supply points now have weapon crates here. We click like that to open and then pull open like this. And along with that, oops, that looks like that spawned in there. 
got to fix that glitch, uh, is that now when you get uh, weapons that actually can accept uh, rail detachments of some kind, you will oftentimes get an attachment for them. So in this case, I started with a 1911, but also got this rail adapter for it. Let's load that up. And what did we get? <laughs> Looks like we got a, uh, a pair of glow ring sights for it. So you'll notice that attachments spawn way more frequently now, which means that over the course of playing, you're going to end up having a lot more sort of like Franken guns uh, as you uh, as you collect those attachments. You'll also notice that I start with one gun, not two. Uh, and that's the way it works now is that supply points are one piece of equipment uh, per place. So let's go ahead and switch over to Arm Swinger, which is my preferred one. Okay, this doesn't look like the whole point. Let's see what the second supply point gives us. It's this way, is it? Where the red area is? Oh, doesn't look it. No enemies there. Ah, here we go. And... Whew! They saw me a little faster than I expected there. All right, all right. Let's open this up. Ah, and we got ourselves a uh, revolver. Beautiful, beautiful. With the new speed loaders, the sucker is a lot better to, uh, to use. So yeah, and I'm just gonna go ahead and defend one point here, just for those of you folks who have not seen uh, this mode in action since it was added. Actually, no, let's go this way. Just that. 44 kicks enough that it isn't so great firing one-handed, truth be told. What is wrong with you, Anti? There we go. Reload that. There we go. There we go. You'll also notice, those of you who've been playing this mode, that that was a little shorter of a hold. Now, instead of always being 120 seconds for every single hold point, they start a bit shorter, mainly because I'm giving you more restricted equipment at the beginning, and they'll get longer over time. Whew. So there we go. So those are the updates uh, to this. Let's go ahead and uh, jump out of VR and talk about what else is coming up soon. Yo! So we're out of VR, so let's take a look at what else was on the uh, change log that might be relevant to you uh, for this update. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Um, uh, the AKM's sort of base magazine pose uh, was fixed uh, for the Vive specifically. A number of people said it was holding the, uh, the mag way too low. 
Uh, for the, if, if you didn't catch it in one of the past two devlogs, uh, I added a, essentially a snap turn option to the joystick uh, teleport locomotion mode. That's the sixth one on the list and basically makes it so that if you push the joystick forward, you will initiate the regular teleportation beam. But if you push it from the center to the left or the right as a flick, you'll snap turn 45 degrees. And so that should help those of you who are playing in a front facing configuration be able to, to turn rapidly uh, without necessarily having to translate at all. Uh, cool. So that's in there. Um, oh, and I just, uh, I, I made some pretty major changes, tweaks, and bug fixes to touchpad and arm swinger locomotion in general. Uh, changes to the way that elevation leveling occurs, especially if you're sort of jamming yourself into a tight position, uh, some of which exist in, I believe, the mini arena, um, as well as hopefully... Um, preventing you from going through sort of invisible walls that I've created that you shouldn't be able to go through. Somehow, and I, I really don't know at what point or for how long this has been broken, uh, those walls would stop when you were translating with your controller, uh, with your body, but if you leaned your head forward, you could just sort of poke through the wall and then keep going. Uh, that should theoretically now be fixed. There's still probably some edge cases. You'll always be able to glitch it, especially if you're uh, <coughs> swapping... Uh, locomotion modes, um, but it should work well enough for what its primary purpose is, which is to prevent you from falling off of things you shouldn't uh, be able to fall off of. Cool, what else? Um, yeah, I mentioned that last week, the SVT40 sounds are fixed, uh, a little glitch with the Browning High Power Mag with hollow points has been fixed, um, the AK70, uh, AKS74U's mag is actually seated correctly. In it, I can't believe I didn't notice that uh, earlier. Um, yeah, just a bunch of other little minor fixes with data corruption, things being mistagged. Um, but I think I've mainly covered all the big and important stuff. So, um, despite the fact that we have been on a uh, a, a one update a uh, a month cadence for for the most part, uh, because a uh, holiday season. Is, uh, is coming up, and because I'm going to be gone for about a one-week stretch in the middle of December, um, there's actually going to be another full update next week, and I'm not going to tell you anything about it yet, uh, but it will come with a uh, bunch of announcements and some fun things uh, for, uh, for you folks to uh, spend some of your time this December on, so I'm super excited. But until then, uh, please jump in and continue to uh, play and enjoy uh, taken hold. Um, where it's at, just to give you a little bit of a picture in terms of a longer roadmap, um, and this is the reason why I haven't tweaked anything like the spawns or the types of enemies that come in, is that those are much longer term iterative changes um, that make sense to do once I'm ready to take it from what it currently is, which is a really fun to play prototype, um, and fold it up to something that resembles more of meaty full mode. Um, I'd like to do at least three environments for it that have different sorts of sort of topologies and shapes. Um, if you remember last week's devlog, I showed off some other tile kits that I've been working on uh, that would be part of that. Um, I would really like to expand it to include some of the idea, sort of game mode or mutator ideas that a number of folks have put forth. Uh, one that I absolutely loved the idea of that someone mentioned was an ammo pouch mode, which was basically the idea that you can spawn lock and duplicate cartridges, shotgun shells or, or, or regular sort of brass rounds, but you can't spawn lock and duplicate magazines, uh, which would sort of force you, would, uh, you'd still sort of carry your sort of high powered uh, uh, weapons on you, but you would sort of be limited to how many physical magazines you could carry on you. Uh, with those, which creates a completely different situation in terms of how you prioritize uh, what you're carrying and how. Um, I'd also really like to eventually do a straight up limp, no spawn locking anything mode, um, but to do that and do it properly and make sure that I don't ever generate a situation where there would be no way for you to survive because there's not enough ammo being generated in the system, I have to recode the way that enemies are spawned, equipment is spawned, and actually always be sort of calculating that to make sure that it's within a sort of soft range um, so that you just aren't defending a point that there was no way you could ever defend. 
Um, although granted, probably be easier to uh, to to handle that if I included a little more like melee weapons in it. That could be that could be interesting. So. So anyhow, that is, uh, that's everything for this week. Uh, as always, let me know uh, how you're liking things, how the, the new mode plays, how the new toys work, and uh, I will see you all next week. Peace.